Oh, hello there. I'm Bill Chan. I'm Nima Kung. I'm Van Chan. In this class, I'll read to all of you. Chapter 7, Section 3 of the Picture of Orion Gray. Ass. Ah. Oh. The Picture of Dorian Gray. Oscar Wilder. Chapter 7, Section 3. They are both simply forms of imitation, remarked Lord Henry. But do let us go. Dorian. You must not stay here any longer. It is not good for one's morals to see bad acting. Besides, I don't suppose you will want your wife direct. So what does it matter if she plays Gillette like a wooden doll? She is very lovely. And if she knows as little about life as she does about acting, she will be a delightful experience. There are only two kinds of people who are really fascinated people who know absolutely everything and people who know absolutely nothing good heavens my dear boy don't look so tragic the secret of remaining young is never to have an emotion that is unbecoming come to the club with basil and myself we'll smoke cigarettes and drink to the beauty of Sybil Vane she is beautiful away. Harry cried the lad. I want to be alone. Basil. You must go. Ah. Can you see that my heart is breaking? The hot tears came to his eyes. His lips trembled. And rushing to the back of the box. He leaned up against the wall hiding his face in his hands. That is go. Basil, said Lord Henry with a strange tenderness in his voice. And the two young men passed out together. A few moments afterwards, the footlights flared up and the curtain rose on the third. I should. Dorian Gray went back to his seat. He looked pale. And proud and indifferent. The play dried on and seemed interminable. Half of the audience went out, tramping in heavy boots and laughing. The whole thing was a fiasco. The last act was played to almost empty benches. The curtain went down on a titter and some groans. As soon as it was over, Dorian Gray rushed behind the scenes in the green room. The girl was standing there alone, with a look of triumph on her face. Her eyes were lit with an exquisite fire. There was a radiance about her. Her parted lips were smiling over some secret of their own. When he entered, she looked at him, and an expression of infinite joy came over her. How badly I acted tonight. Dorian, she cried. Horribly, he answered, gazing at her in amazement. Horribly. It was dreadful. Are you well? You have no idea what it was. The girl smiled. Dorian, she answered fingering over his name with long-drawn music in her voice. As though it were sweeter than honey to the very petals of her mouth. Dorian. You should have understood. But you understand now. Understand what? He asked. I'm really. Why I was so bad tonight. Why I shall always be bad. He shrugged his shoulders. You are ill. I suppose. When you are ill, you shouldn't act. You make yourself ridiculous. 
My friends were bored. She seemed not to listen to him. She was transfigured with joy. An ecstasy of happiness dominated her. Dorian. Dorian, she cried. Before I knew you, Etting was one reality of my life. It was only in the theatre that I lived. I thought that it was all true. I was Rosalind one night and Portia the other. The joy of Beatrice was my joy. And the sorrows of Cordelia were mine also. I believed in everything. The common people who acted with me seemed to me to be godlike. The painted scenes were my world. I knew nothing but shadows. And I thought them real. You came ill. My beautiful love, and you freed my soul from prison. You taught me what reality really is. Tonight, for the first time in my life, I saw through the hollowness, the sham, the silliness of the empty pageant in which I had always played. Tonight, for the first time, I became conscious that the Romeo was hideous, and old, and painted, that the moonlight in the orchard was false, that the scenery was vulgar, and that the words I had to speak were unreal, were not my words, were not what I wanted to say. You had brought me something higher. Which all art is but a reflection. You had made me understand what love really is. My love. My love. Prince Charming. Prince of Life. I have grown sick of shadows. You are more to me than all art can ever be. What have I to do with the puppets of a play? When I came on tonight. I could not understand how it was everything had gone from me. I thought that I was going to be wonderful. I found that I could do nothing. Suddenly it dawned on my soul what it all meant. The knowledge was exquisite to me. I heard the missing. And I smiled. What could they know of love such as ours? Take me away. Tyrion, take me away with you. Where we can be quite alone. I hate the stage. I might mimic a passion that I do not feel. But I cannot mimic one that burns me like fire. Oh. Tyrion. Tyrion. You understand now what it signifies. Even if I could do it. It would be profanation for me to play at being in love. To be continued.